Yo, we are here with episode 29 of my West Ham United career mode. Before I get into this one, if you could smash that like button if you are enjoying the series, guys, and also hit that subscribe button if you are new around here. We look at some youth players here. Marco Barone is ready to be called up to the first team. Only problem is he's a centre back and he is five foot four. Major dilemma with one of our youth players here. The question is, should we sign him up or what should we do with this one? He's a very small centre back and that equals many problems for our side if we do play him in that role. So let me know in the comment section, do you think I should sign up Marco Barone? And if I do, should I even play him or should I just look to sell him on uh, once I train him up a little bit? But now we get ready for a game against FC Michelin in the Champions Cup, who are currently bottom of our group. This should be a victory for us here, but we cannot take the Danish side lightly. Uh, and be a very good centre midfielder, uh, Sisto. Uh, they've got some very, very good players here, so we make sure... We need to be on top of the game and just um, close them down, close the spaces down as their darling gives the ball away to Wilson here. Worst possible start that could possibly ever for the Danish side here is Callum Wilson passes on a absolute blunder at the back between um, the goalkeeper and the centre back here. I don't know what was going on. He's tried to pass it to his centre back, the keeper. It's full to Wilson. He's tackled the defender again and finds the ball into the back of the net, which is probably one of the simplest finishes he's ever going to have in his career. West Ham gift the opportunity and Callum Wilson does get his fourth goal in the Champions Cup. It wouldn't stop us coming forward here yet again with Callum Wilson. Great bit of play here from the England striker as he cuts away from his man. Shoots. Takes a cruel deflection off Hansen. Callum Wilson will somehow claim that as his own and gets his second goal of the game through what was an absolute bizarre game. It's been an absolute crazy start to this game here. Um, you know, two goals pretty much out of nothing. Um, we haven't really been dominant in the game, but we've been very lucky. The goalkeeper gifted us for the first one, and the defender with a cruel deflection gifts us for the second goal. Callum Wilson will claim on both, though, and does get five goals in this year's competition so far. Uh, Michelin being the professional team they are will not put their heads down and Beer gets a shot away but youth goalkeeper Seaborn does hold on and being 18 years of age or 17 years of age should I say and being in the starting 11 for West Ham is a major achievement for this youth player who's come through the ranks as Sisto gets onto the ball here shoots off the post Seaborn did have it covered though and that would be West Ham's turn to attack right on the half now mark with the Brazilian Kennedy here great bit of footwork here from him and he finds the ball into the back of the net the left midfielder makes it 3-0 to West Ham United and that time you cannot argue with the quality of the goal here. Great run in there from Kennedy down that left-hand side. Just cuts in, falls the defender. He's just so nimble onto the ball. No one was really going to cause any problems for him. Um, and he gets through here, gets his third goal in the Champions Cup. And that's not bad going from the new sign that we signed from Chelsea this season. But Michelin will try and come back in here with Singh. Great bit of play for him is he actually does find Raya, but he puts it way wider than the mark here, right on half time here. But they will get another attack away here. The ball gets crossed into Sisto at the back post. And oh my word, that is an absolute stunning finish there from Sisto. Michelin 3 1 there, and that is by far probably the best goal we're going to see today, and maybe even the best goal in the whole of the competition so far. Look at this play. The ball comes in, not causing any problems as you'd think, but my word, that is a volley and a half from the midfielder there. As you can see, we're going to half time though, 3 1 up, but that goal was absolutely unreal from Sisto here. Um, definitely got to make sure we do not leave him open. Uh, Seaborn, no chance. And Antonio comes forward here on that right-hand side. Gets his shot away, but Darling does hold on for another great save here. Just past the hour mark here, the ball would come in from a corner. Does find Mazega, but just over the bar there, unfortunately, on that occasion. It would now be Michelin's turn to attack. 20 minutes left to go as Olsen does actually find Rover or Roya. Puts it into the box, falls all the way back into Anderson. Turns, shoots, and into the back of the net here. Michelin get the bang back to 3-2. Would you believe it? This team was out dead in the water at 3-0. They've somehow clawed it back to 3-2, and this game has livened up here yet again. Will they find the goal they are looking for, though? We have to wait and see as we do bring on uh, Alex Bergwin, uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and Dominic O'Connell now. Two of the youth players and the youngster in Ruben Loftus-Cheek. So O'Connell does unleash Kennedy, who goes through on goal here. Really well played here from Kennedy. Can he get a second straight at Darling? But he would save that, and unfortunately... For Michelin, the game will come to an end. And West Ham United are the 3-2 victors in what has been a very eventful game here. And an unforgettable one in the Champions Cup. Michelin will feel definitely hard done by not getting the result here today. After that fantastic Sisto goal. But fortunately enough for us, we did hold on and do the business in the first half an hour of this game. But guys, if you are enjoying today's video, just a friendly reminder. Make sure to smash that like button. Also, subscribe if you are new around here. It only takes a couple of seconds out of your day. As Wilson takes on man and match. And now Eric Dyer pops his...
his head around the door and asked if he can open up con contract negotiations for him for a brand new deal at the club, which I have no problem with doing for the 22 year old who's been absolutely a consistent performer for us. He was on 35 grand per week. We do up that by 15 grand to make him on a 50 grand per week. And hopefully he does accept that. But in the meantime, we do have a game against Aston Villa in the Barclays Premier League, which will see us get a 2-0 win. Uh, goals from Lanzini and Dimitri Payet will be enough to see off uh, managerless Aston Villa at this time of being. O'Connell, Bergen, Seaborn, Fitzwater and Loftus-Cheek all do a bit more training here. And uh, Eric Dyer does accept the contract offer, so he does commit his long-term future to the club for at least another five years, which is great to see, and uh, I'm not looking to let him go. I think he's been one of the best signings I've made and one of the biggest unsung heroes in the club so far this season. More training there for the young players, and um, no one really going up to the next level yet as we prepare for an important game here against Manchester United. We do start with Diarra Seta in centre attack and midfield, also with Lanzini and Taliso starting with Dyer. Mazega, Stone, Shaw, Bellerin and Butland. The reason for this is we do have a crucial game coming up against, you guessed it, Real Madrid. Now, whoever wins that game is going through the group as champions. It ain't that in my mind. But if we do lose that game against Real Madrid and lose our last game against CSK in Moscow, I think we will actually finish second in the group, which we do not want, as United will come forward here with their first attack. Andreas Pereira with a header just wide of the mark. It will be West Ham's turn to attack, though, with Eric Dyer, who does link the ball up beautifully with Teliso here. The Frenchman turns away with his first start and starting 11 here and produces a really good save there from Romero. Right into the half an hour mark now, Luke Shaw against his former club opens up the play and splits the defence into Mara Akadi. First time shot, but his fellow Argentine teammate does, well, uh, countryman, should I say, does make the save as Damian opens it up for Maran Flay here does play into Wayne Rooney England captain gets a shot away and Jack Butland is equal to the effort right on half time now West Ham come the attack with Taliso dodges away from Fellaini there shoots and Romero again produces a very acrobatic save to keep the game at 0-0 going in at the interval here three shots for United four for us uh, they've had a bit more possession. It's a completely open game. Anyone's for the taking. Will we find the goal we are looking for? As Arcadi pants on a mistake here made by, I believe, Paddy McNair. As we do come forward here, it's Mario Arcadi against Romero. Shoots, and that's another great save there from the Argentine shot stopper. As Teliso comes forward, though, great bit of play from the Frenchman. He's an absolutely dictating play as he does play it into uh, Antonio here, who's a goal machine at worst. And I just can't believe it. You can't find a back in the net here. As United come forward now with a free kick of their own, Depay. Just over the bar, actually way over the bar there. That is a poor effort from the Dutchman as Antonio wins the ball back for us into Hector Bellerin. Stones loses that though to Anthony Martial with Griezmann in support for him. Plays it into his fellow countryman here, but way over the bar from Antoine Griezmann. You would not expect that from him. West Ham now trying desperately to get a result here as Mahmoud Dahou gets onto the ball here, turns, shoots, and it's blocked over the bar there from Marcus Rojo. The last attack of the game would come to West Ham. Can they make it count, though? Antonio plays it in to Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw does play into path of Mahmoud Dahoud. Dahoud now goes into the box, takes on uh, Masako, our former player, tries to play it into Loftus-Cheek, but Damian clears it away. The game would come to an end here at Old Trafford, and the final whistle would seal a 0-0 stalemate between the two sides here. No one taking bragging rights. But who would take bragging rights tonight in the FA Cup semi-final between West Ham United and Manchester United? Put in the comment section down below who you think will go through into the FA Cup semi-final. And as you can see, Romero does take home man of match from what was a really good performance from him against our heavy attacking West Ham United side. But unfortunately, guys, that is a bring end to today's video. If you did enjoy it, as always, smash that like button. It only takes a couple of seconds out of your day, and I really would appreciate it. If you are also new around here and you haven't already, subscribe too. It's free, and you'll never miss a video from me ever again. As always, I hope you have a really nice day. I will be now off to watch West Ham United hopefully advance in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Fingers crossed. And if you are United fans, I hope I guess you'll be feeling the same. Have a really nice day, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.